Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash heroes, villains, and sidekicks. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Episode 31, The Crow. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick Show. Well, this week, we are going to be talking about The Crow, and this is an interesting character that I really didn't know a lot about, but someone over on the Facebook page, over the Heroes and Villains and Sidekicks Facebook page, posted that this is a hero that's one of their favorites and that she really wanted to hear about. So I decided to do an episode on The Crow. And again, I didn't really know a lot about this character. Now, there was a movie, of course, uh, that came out, but really all I could remember about the movie was sort of the tragedy that revolves around it. And we'll get into that, of course, a little bit later. But I didn't know about this character, so it was really interesting to go back and look at the uh, original origin and a lot of the issues of that book because it was something that I know a lot of people uh, had loved and had talked about and it became a movie, but it was just something that at the time I wasn't reading. So this was a really fun podcast to research. And of course, we're doing this through a fan request or a listener request. So you could either go over to the Facebook page and post some person that you'd like to hear about, you know, hero, villain, or sidekick in pop culture, comic books, uh, literature, or of course you can go over to the website, heroes, villains, and sidekicks.com. And right at the top of the folder, right at the top of the site, you can actually click on that little microphone and leave me a message. And I will of course play that on the show like we did for that wildcat episode. So head over to the site and leave me a message who you'd like to hear about, or head over to the Facebook page. And of course, while you're doing all that, heading over, uh, head over to iTunes and leave us a review. I'd love to get some more reviews on there to help us sort of move up the ranks and help more people know about us. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's get into the origin of the crow. Now, there have been several characters who have taken on the mantle of the crow. So we're going to be looking at really the the first one, the, the origin story of the original crow. So Eric Draven, a.k.a. the crow was created by James O'Bear back in 1989 and first appeared in Caliber Comics Presents, and then he later went on to be published by Image Comics. Now, The Crow is a story of love and revenge and is really quite dark. The art is just fantastic. Again, I hadn't been familiar with the art looked like, and I really dug it. Now, when we examine the origin of The Crow, we'll be looking at, like I said, his original origin as he first appeared in the pages of Aubert's original Crow stories for Caliber Comics. Now, the original series was black and white. Now, that and Aubert's style, uh, you know, his art style, really worked together to depict a very dark and violent world that the Crow inhabited. Now, in the initial eight pages... Uh, is where we're actually introduced to the crow. We don't actually see his full origin, but it is hinted at that the character has suffered a great loss and is punishing those that wronged him. So again, this is a story of revenge. This is a story of, of justice. So now how did Eric become the avenging vigilante righting wrongs? Let's take a look. Eric and his girlfriend Sherry were out for a nice day at the beach when their car broke down. Now, the couple were then set upon by a rough bunch of characters that definitely meant them harm. They were quite menacing. You know, kind of stereotypical looking, you know, uh, menacing gang uh, people, but uh, still, they were they were scary looking. Now, the gang attack Eric while he's trying to protect Shelly, and they actually shoot him in the back of the head. Now, it's just a grazing blow, and he survives, and he staggers towards Shelly trying to help her. But he doesn't get very far when one of the other gang members shoots him at close range and and it paralyzes him. Now he falls to the ground, and he's unable to do anything to help Shelley, but watch as they brutally rape and kill her. Now, as this all happens, and he's watching this, tears, he's like sort of laying on his side, tears are running down his face, and a crow actually lands next to him and speaks to him and tells him that he doesn't have to look, that he shouldn't look. Now, Eric is brought to the hospital. He's found, he's brought to the hospital and he dies. And as he's dying, he's uttering the crow, the crow, the crow said not to look, 
But that's not where Eric's story ends. Now, this crow that, you know, tried to warn Eric, that was speaking to warn Eric, is not an ordinary bird. Now, in some mythologies and folklore, crows will appear to people who have been wronged, you know, by violence, but that are not taken to the hereafter. But they actually resurrect them allowing them to take their vengeance upon those who have wronged them. So it's, you know, it's sort of folklore, it's mythology. The the soul of the crow enters the victim who has been wronged, bringing them back from the dead and imbuing them with the power that enables them to, you know, perform these acts of vengeance that they that they need, that they need to move on, that they need to gain some type of closure. Now, a quick message from our sponsor. For you, the listeners of the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick show, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Now, like I've been mentioning in the show, I'm actually listening to a bunch of old science fiction, uh, the, the Foundation series, actually. So I'm making my way through those. So again, you don't have to just get these, you know, new books. They're great. Um, I actually, what else did I get? The Noah Wiley, his new book. I uh, haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, but it's there. So again, check it out. Head over to Audible. And if you go over there today, you can get your free audio book. Just type in audibletrial.com slash heroes, villains, and sidekicks. Again, that's audibletrial.com, heroes, villains, and sidekicks. And you can download your free audio book today. Now back to the show. So what powers and abilities do the people who are resurrected by this uh, mythical crow, what powers and abilities do they have when they're brought back and they're on their mission? So once sort of the spirit of the crow inhabits the resurrected and once he's brought them back, uh, the crow, you know, being uh, a, a dead person, being dead, is basically invulnerable to any injury injuries and can instantly recover and regenerate from injuries. So again, they're dead. Now, of course, you know, uh, like in some shows where if they're dead and they get hurt, it doesn't heal, this, uh, this person will heal because he takes, you know, a lot of abuse. Now, being dead, the character, of course, also does not need to eat or drink or sleep. So it really gives them a lot of time to sort of sit around and think about this horrible thing that has happened to them. It's, it's kind of like a cruel... Uh, one, two, you know, you, you get these abilities to be able to, to avenge and to seek justice, but you know, you can't sleep, you can't eat again. It's sort of like if you were depressed, it's sort of like if you were, you were, you were obsessed about something, you wouldn't be able to sleep or eat or drink. So it's, it's very sort of a, a metaphor for depression and for, and for obsession. And, you know, one thing you don't get when you're depressed and obsessed, which the uh, crow has is he has superhuman strength and reflexes. Then these really allow him to make short work of his enemies. Now, the crow can also see the memories of others when he touches an object that the person either owned or you know was dear to them, and he can also project those images into another's mind. Now, for example, Eric the crow makes one of the gang members relive Shaw, uh, Shelley's final hours of her rape and her murder. Now, the crow has one vulnerability that was first developed in the movie adaptation and later was then added to the comics. Now, the actual crow, the bird, gives the character his strength, but if the crow, uh, the actual crow, the bird, was injured or killed, the character would lose their strength and power. Again, it wasn't like that in the beginning, but it sort of, uh, that happened in the movie, and then they sort of, when they went toward, for farther with comics, they went ahead and added that. Now, the crow's powers also change a bit through the series and movies, with the character being able to see through the crow's eyes sometimes, and even uh, actually turn into a crow and fly. And that's the thing like this, when the character sort of goes through all these changes, either through time or publisher or media, so like a movie, things are going to happen, they're going to evolve, they're going to change their power sets, and that's what happened with the crow. The crow, like I mentioned, started out being published by Caliber Comics, for its initial four-part series, and then it was picked up by London Knight Studios, who printed another Crow series, until it was then picked up by Image Comics, who printed a 10-issue miniseries where the story of the Crow from the original comics is mingled with 
you know, other elements and even movie elements. Now, one aspect of the character that stayed the same throughout the comics and movies is the look and appearance of the character. The crow is very pale and he has this really distinctive looking sort of painted whitish face that he painted actually to look like the Greek comedy masks that were in his, you know, his deceased girlfriend's Shelly's house. So, you know, you know, those those Harlequin type masks, that's where he got the idea to sort of paint his face like that. As I mentioned, this is a pretty dark character with a very dark origin, but that is actually due to the fact that writer Obar created the character and story as a way to work through the death of his real-life fiance, who was killed by a drunk driver in 1978. So this is someone really dealing with his own demons and pouring it out into his comics. So Barr wrote The Crow to deal with this tragedy, but the story itself actually sat for seven years until he found a publisher, which of course was Caliber Press. Now the comic at that point, once it was published, was really a huge success. And of course, it it spawned films and uh, additional comics. Now, the first movie, The Crow, starred Brandon Lee. Of course, this is the son of the famed martial artist Bruce Lee. Unfortunately, on set, tragedy struck when the film Prop Gun, it was a prop gun in the film, was improperly loaded with a defective shell. Now, when the gun was fired at Lee, a projectile from the modified blank, struck Lee in the stomach, and he died from the wound. So it was literally the, the, the what is it, the, the blank was loaded wrong. Uh, it had something in it, and it was a you know freak accident, and it, he was actually shot and killed. It wasn't a bullet that came out, but it, was, it might as well have been the bullet, but it was something in the blank that shot out and, you know, it actually killed him. Now, the film had to uh, cut scenes and use, you know, double uh, double in creative ways to sort of finish the film. In the end, it did gross $94 million. But, you know, it was a huge tragedy because we lost, uh, you know, another Lee, another uh, who knows what he might have done movie wise. He was really just starting in his career. Now, again, I wasn't very familiar with this character, so this was a really fun show to record. I really enjoyed Obara's art and thought that it really fit the mood of the book. I really, when I'm reading a book, of course, the story needs to be interesting, but I really need to dig the art and usually the colors. Of course, this wasn't coloring, but the shading in it and just the the line work, uh, it really you know, I felt what this character was feeling. There was there was a darkness to it, a sadness to it. It was a little creepy, a little scary, and I thought it worked really well. Now, I even rewatched the movie, and I think it holds up pretty well, you know, here and there. And knowing that the story now, you know, was really born of such tragedy, some real-life tragedy, to me, it really gave the book a lot more depth than I really felt for this character. Now, if you've only watched the movie, I, you know, I highly recommend reading the comics. And if you head over to Amazon, I noticed this, and I'll put a link to it on the site, heroesvillainsandsidekicks.com. Amazon has a great edition, and it's titled The Crow Special Edition. And that has all of Barr's work in it on The Crow, and it actually has some art and some pages that have never, you know, they've never been seen before. So I, you know, I hope you enjoyed this episode on the crow. Again, uh, this is one of the fun things about doing this show. Now, when I do an episode on, you know, a character I know a lot about, I still find out interesting things I never knew about, like the kryptonite episode that we did a while back. I didn't know some of the things that were in there. But when I get to do a show like this where I'm talking about a character, I literally know almost nothing about. Uh, I really enjoy it. I enjoy finding out about the character, expanding my knowledge, and then hopefully sharing some facts or some interesting things about the character with you guys. And uh, that you might not have known, or maybe you're like me, you never, you know, you'd never even read about the character or know anything about them. So again, I want to thank you for listening to this week's show. Head over to the site and check out the post for this page. It's over on the episodes page, and it'll be called The Crow. And take a look. I'll be adding a lot of images of Obar's work and uh, some clips from the movie. And you can listen to the show over there on the site. But better yet, head over to iTunes and subscribe or leave a review. Now, I know people are out there listening. So if you can head over, take two seconds, leave a review, 
I know it's hard. Uh, I'm doing the laundry. I'm listening to the podcast. I'm folding laundry. I'm listening to the podcast, uh, mowing the lawn. Uh, it's not easy to just jump over and hit iTunes. But if you do get a second and you think of it, head over there, subscribe, and leave us a review. That would be awesome. And again, if you want to hear about anybody on the show, either go over to our Facebook page or you can head over to the site, heroes, villains, and sidekicks.com, and actually leave me a voice message. Just a little microphone right on the home page. Just click on it and leave a message, and I'll add it in the show. So, again, thank you for listening. I think I've said that three times now, but I want to thank you for listening. The theme music is by Broke for Free, and you can you can learn about other music we've used on this week's episode over at the site. And we will be back next week with more. And it's going to be an it's going to be a interview show, and it's going to be an interview with Brian Haberlin incredible artist prolific back in the i mean he has been in comics forever he can do anything and everything and now he's into uh 3d and augmented reality in his own company and it's just a fun interview and that's going to be next week so we'll be back next week take care